The Military and Overseas Voter Empowerment Act, or the MOVE Act, requires states to mail absentee ballots to our troops overseas at least 45 days before an election. Yet nearly a full year since it passed, one out of three states have failed to implement one or more of the key provisions of the MOVE Act, and that could keep our troops on the front lines from getting the chance to vote. Let's talk about it now. we got a couple of guests to hash this out. Eric Eversall is the executive director of the Military Voter Protection, or MVP, project. And Bernie Busher is the Colorado Secretary of State. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining us to talk about this. Glad to be here. It's a pleasure. Mr. Secretary, I want to start with you. Uh, under this law, there is a waiver provision that allows states to get a waiver from these requirements if they show that they've got undue hardship. We're told that uh, Colorado is going to apply or has applied for that waiver. Uh, tell us why you can't get the ballots out in time. Shannon, um, first of all, the MOVE Act is a great piece of legislation. Uh, it does have a number of federal mandates in it, and one of them is difficult for some of the Colorado counties to comply with. We have 11,299 overseas voters. Of that, 1,042 of them are in the military. In uh, 2008, Colorado was one of the leading states. We had over 80% of our military overseas return their ballots successfully. We've taken a number of steps to try to enhance the opportunity for our military to vote. In this election, we'll actually be extending the time for uh, military votes to be counted for eight days after November 2nd. The problem is that because we have a late primary and we have uh, a very careful certification process to make sure that our, uh, the integrity of our elections is good, some of our counties, mostly the smaller counties, are, have a difficult time complying with the 45-day period. So they may be mailing out the ballots 40 days, but if you look at that 40 days and add the eight days that our state adds on to count ballots after uh, the general election uh, date of November 2nd, we're actually giving more days for our military than is required by the MOVE Act. But we're not doing it the same way that the feds mandated. And that's the reason why we're asking for a waiver one time from the 45-day provision. All right, one of the people most concerned about these waivers out there is Senator John Cornyn out of Texas, a Republican. He was one of the authors of the MOVE Act. It was a bipartisan effort with Senator Chuck Schumer. Uh, we talked to him today about this request of waivers by a number of states and territories. Uh, here's what he told us. We shouldn't allow either because of foot dragging at the state level or through the federal bureaucracy uh, foot dragging to uh, impede military voting. And I would be very interested in seeing, uh, seeing the reasons documented why they feel like it's impossible for them to comply. That's the only excuse if it's impossible, not if it's inconvenient, not if they don't want to, not if, uh, you know, for any one of a host of other reasons. So all right, Eric, I want to bring you in. You used to be with the DOJ, an attorney in the voting rights section. We have heard the explanation uh, from the secretary. And do you, does it meet with your standards? Do you think that it complies with the act? Is it a good enough explanation of the hardship that they're going to face? Absolutely not. Uh, I mean, one of the frustrations uh, that I've experienced over the last uh, six months as states tried to implement the MOVE Act is that some of these states are simply not being that innovative in finding ways to make sure that our service members have sufficient time. And unfortunately, a prime example of this lack of innovation is Colorado. Uh, Colorado, uh, the Colorado Secretary of State recently issued a letter uh, indicating that the reason that some of these counties can't get these ballots out in sufficient time uh, is that it's going to take more than 15 days for some of these counties to print their absentee ballots and mail them. Uh, We've got to find a better uh, excuse or a reason not to comply with the MOVE Act uh, than the fact that it takes 15 days to print ballots. Walk down to Kinko's, put in the copier, print them, and get them to our troops so they have time to vote. Mr. Secretary, is that a viable option for you? I mean, to expedite the printing and get these things done? <laughs> well, uh, Shannon, you know, that's the statement of a Washington insider who's never actually been in some of the counties and seen how they have to uh, prepare the ballots. We've got counties that have over 2,000 different voter styles. That means that there's 2,000 different forms in that county. It takes a good bit of time and a lot of care in order to make sure that those counties are uh, preparing ballots accurately and then that each uh, uh, citizen overseas gets the right ballot. Um, to, to suggest that you can just walk across the street to Kinko's um, uh, 
isn't, uh, isn't consistent with reality. Um, it, I was in Alamosa, Colorado yesterday, and this is a small county that's got about 40 overseas military voters, but they're going to need lots and lots of different uh, ballots. It, it may not be just one ballot, it more likely is a couple of dozens of different types of ballots. And to suggest that these county clerks don't work hard uh, just doesn't uh, comport with reality. All right, Eric, morning, quickly, I want to give you license. the... Eric, I want to bring you in quickly. Uh, we're sure. out of time, but I want to give you a final word here to wrap this up. Sure. I, you know, at the end of the day, we need to find solutions to make sure that our service members have sufficient time to vote. And our primary concern is we get, you know, 34 days before the deadline for mailing ballots. We still have over a third of the states that still uh, are, don't appear to be in a compliance with the 45-day deadline. And, and we need to find solutions very quickly to ensure that our service members have enough time to vote uh, and make sure that their votes are counted. And I'm sure that's one thing that you both agree on, Eric Eversall and Secretary Busher. We thank you both for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much.